Rico Moresca and see Dubuffet, the art brute. Oh boy. Well, I snuck into uh, the Pace Gallery last night and they had a uh, wonderful exhibition of Jean Dubuffet titled The Last Two Years. And uh, I might. Uh, splice these together. I'll read a little bit from the press release. It says that uh, Dubuffet and the Art Brute presents the art of Jean Dubuffet alongside works championed by Dubuffet and collected under the rubric of Art Brute between 1945 and his death in 1985. Dubuffet defined Art Brute aggressively collecting, exhibiting, and publishing the genre this collection is now housed at the Collection de la Art Brut Lucene, Switzerland. In 1945, Dubuffet began to travel extensively throughout Europe to discover an art that addressed itself to our spirit, not our eyes. Oh, this is by Adolf Wolfley. And uh, he's probably one of the grand masters of Art Brut. I think he was uh, in a mental institution in Switzerland for like 50 or 60 years. This is also Adolf Wolfley. Now, I've read a wonderful book on uh, Art Brut and they talk about uh, Du Buffet. I guess after World War II, he left France and went back and was touring around in Switzerland and southern Germany. This is a du buffet. It's called Promenure 1951 Wash and Ink on Paper Laid on Cardboard. And uh, these are some of the great Corpse de la Dama pieces. Also, Ink on Paper 1950. This is up 10 and a half by 8.5 inches. This is a portrait of Rene Bertolet. Graphite on paper. Anyway, while he was touring around in uh, Switzerland, he happened to come in contact with, I don't know whether it was Dr. Princehorn or one of the one of the doctors who was running a mental institution there that happened to show us, him his collection of works by some of the patients. It's called Passage to Metaphysics. Oh, this is wonderful. It's got to be a self-portrait. Well, here's a great example of work by Janko Domisk. Untitled ballpoint on paper. And, you know, I've said before that a lot of young contemporary artists are looking at primitive art and outsider art and art of the insane for inspiration. And in many ways, I think a lot of that is due to Dubuffet's work that he did collecting this and cataloging it and sort of pushing it into the mainstream. It's another Wolfie. It's a Dubuffet. It's du Chimeux. There's two camels. And uh, one of the things I love about Dubuffet is he really has a feel for the materials. He's very conscious of the properties of pigments and paints and earth. This is a 
brilliant piece. Aloise Corbaz, Untitled. I think the other thing that's kind of interesting about these outsider artists, brood artists, is how much they use text. And there were no rules for them about what they could or couldn't put into their work. Oh, this is great. This piece is a two-sided uh, drawing. It's the back side. Yeah, you get two for the price of one there. You get tired of this, you turn it over. Oh, I thought we could. I'm sorry for that. All right, just don't get slippery hands there. This is maybe one of the greatest outsider artists there is. Augustine Lesage, who I believe was a coal miner in France, and then he had a vision. He was down in the mines and had a vision in which God told him to go and paint. And he told him which colors to go buy, what paintbrushes to buy, what mediums to buy. And then he went home and started the paintings. This is actually tiny. I've seen several of his works that are seven feet tall by five feet wide, eight feet tall by six feet wide. This is a Scotty Wilson. I think he was a British artist. This is Carol Zanelli, who is also a very prominent and important art boot artist. Well, Dubuffet eventually started to collect a lot of this work and uh, established a major collection that has since become a museum. There's also a Zanelli. Another Scotty. But he, uh, he put the collection together and started it exhibiting it to uh, a closed little group of artists in France, in Paris. And at one point he uh, sent the collection for about 10 years over to this guy. It's Alfonso Osorio who had a nice little estate out on uh, Long Island and was also a friend of Jackson Pollock and all of the uh, East Hampton painters. This is a selection of work by Madge Gilles, and she also is one of the major art brood artists. These are all pen and ink on cardboard, about 25 by 20 inches. down this wall of small pen and ink on found paper pieces by Emile Josem Hodinos. That's actually real nice. Great pen work. That is microscopic text in there. Well, this is all very propitious because uh, the Outsider Art Fair here in New York opens next weekend. And it's a great uh, kind of confluence of the Du Buffet last two years, this show, and the Outsider Art. And here's a couple more. Scotty Wilson pieces. I like that signature. Well, we're going to wrap up on this piece by Miguel Hernandez. Passage Vence, Paris, 1948. It's great that. Uh, this makes me think of the Roger Brown with his 
Symmetrical diagramic clouds. So this is James Gum reporting on Du Buffet and the Art Brute here at Rico Moresca on West 20th Street. Thank you, Kate.